Here we go again. Hey, everyone. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS. Coming up on today's show, we're joined in the studio by some old friends, some old friends from way back in the day. <laughs> and they're no strangers to the program. They're working together on some great initiatives that uh, impact our community's creatives. Then we'll speak to the founder and CEO of an organization that has taken a stand against sexual abuse against women and children. Plus, we'll hear from an entertainment consultant who has taken his talents from the music studio to the world of film and television to tell a compelling story through his latest docuseries. And finally, an author and professor sits down with us to highlight his guidebook on how young men can navigate the transition from boys to men. Watch out. Sit back, kick off your shoes, and relax your feet. We're wide open. Here we go. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee, and you're watching Open. It's that live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. Sick, sick, sick. And you can stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV. Leading things off, our first guest of the founder of BX Writers, boop, 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 and a Bronx native poet and public speaker. She does that thing. They both do their thing. And they're no strangers to the program. So uh, they join us to speak about all the ways that they are providing much needed outlets for creatives in our community and highlight upcoming events, too, that they are collaborating on. So please welcome to the show Josue Caceres and Andrea Augustus. Welcome to the show. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so finally, me. in person, right? Know, yes. right? Yeah, we're always you. on a Zoom or something like that, and in now here flesh. we are in the studio. Hopefully, <laughs> always great to be on your show. You know, you always welcome us with open arms. So you know, we appreciate that. Yeah. So, yeah. Appreciate so that. tell us about all this poetry. How did it? How did it all? Most the foundation of it all. How did it all get started? Yeah, um, I mean, for me, you know, um, it's always just been you know about community. You know what I mean? I, I've always been a writer a poet, you know, writing films, writing books. Um, but I've always wanted to do more than that, you know. It, it's, yeah. uh, this is where I was born, you know, is where I was raised, the Bronx. Um, and I want to give these resources, these platforms that I've been fortunate enough to mm. create, I want to give it back, you know, to the community. So I want everyone to share um, the same experience that I've had, you know, all these beautiful experiences within poetry, within yeah. the Bronx. Um, yeah. I'm not a fighter. I'm a writer and a lover. Come on, I know mean, that's right. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. Like but si it. similar to um to Josue, like how I got started in poetry, like I, I also have always uh -huh. been a writer. Um, and I feel like it came out a lot more when I went away to college and I was at a predominantly white institution around the time we were transitioning from the Obama administration to the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. And I kind of realized that a lot of my educators and peers were, um, were supporters. And mm -hmm. you know, I was seeing Make America Great Again stickers and hearing conversations that I was very uncomfortable with. Uh -huh. So you know, I was struggling a lot with you know depression and anxiety. And poetry was actually one of the outlets that I used in order to process a lot of mm -hmm. the just emotions that I was going through. And it went from me just writing poetry to performing poetry and meeting other really dope creatives like Josue and all of our, our friends in the poetry yeah. community. <laughs> How'd you come up with the name Black Poetry Girl? Yeah, Poetic Black Girl. G-U-R-L. Girl, yes. G-U-R-L. Because I have flavor girl, and soul. You know girl, what I'm saying? Girl. <laughs> um, I think that just came from the fact that, you know, I, that's what I identify as. Uh -huh. a, a poetic black girl. And that's mm. also the name of my um, organization, Poetic Black Girl LLC. Yeah. It's just, I feel like there are so many other poetic black girls as yeah. well. So, Folks, wait, how did you guys meet up? Um, you know, I used to um, host these events, and you know, mm -hmm. she would always show up. You know what I mean? And that's something that's, that's how you do it. That's you a, gotta show up. You know what I mean? You that's know. you know, yeah. a piece of advice that I give to everyone. You know, first step is to show up. You know, uh -huh. yeah. be present, be there. You know, she was always there, present, always grabbing the mic. You know, um, and that's how we just connected. You know, we decided to do our own events, um, yeah. Yeah. which eventually turned into the Healing Hour. 
which is our yeah. first event. Beautiful. Um, and at the Healing Hour, you know, basically we like to bring a bunch of writers, artists, creatives together. You know, in the first half yeah. of the show, uh, there's like icebreakers, there's networking. We talk about our week, you know what uh -huh. I mean? Then the second half is an open mic where you're able to share. And it's just a beautiful, you know, event, beautiful experience. Everybody comes out feeling refreshed, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I like and it. And yeah, that's the healing hour, man. Once yeah. a month we're doing it. But we yeah. have a, a Wizard of Oz studio. I, I was wondering if you guys can put the pictures back on the screen right here and you guys can talk to these pictures. Explain yeah. where that sure. Where is that? Oh, definitely, look at us. definitely. So that is, you know, I don't know if you want to you talk oh, about yeah, it. So this, was, this was at the last um, healing hour. Yeah, the venue is actually in Harlem. Uh -huh. It's a space called Hayground Harlem through an organization called Communitas America. And there's water behind um, it? No, it's, it's not water behind oh, us. It's a wall. Oh, yeah, it's a wall. It's just a wall. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a really dope organization called Communitas America, and it's a small business accelerator, and they uh -huh. open up their space for different local entrepreneurs to come out. And here, um, I actually did a collaboration with a hiking organization uh -huh. where we went on like a spiritual hike up at Bear Mountain, mm. and we also did a virtual writing workshop the next day. So it's always about community and expression, creating time uh -huh. and space for mental health. So Hiking skills too. You know what I'm Love saying? That. And that's just that's poetic that. black girl looking fly. That. That? It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is us. This actually the other day uh -huh. we did um an open mic. We brought it to a school. We brought it to an elementary school in the Bronx. So we had the students writing their own poetry and then afterwards they were able to share it on stage in front of their peers. And that Beautiful. was that was blessed. Yeah, you know, just trying to, you know, provide um like, like we were saying, these resources, you know, to people of all ages, you know, right. our yeah. events, you know, we, we have an older crowd or, you know, we also go to schools where, you know, mm -hmm. we talk to the kids. Exactly. Um, just trying great. to touch all ages, you know. I like that. Awesome. What can you tell us about the upcoming uh, Bronx Writers Anthology? Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. So um, BX Writers Anthology Volume 2. Um, we're uh, being set to release this summer uh -huh. along with Bronx Native. Um, you know, we gathered around 70 writers and photographers all in one book um just highlighting you know the bronx you know the way it was before the way it is now uh the future of the bronx highlighting everything about it you know um we fordham just reviewed our um mm -hmm. volume one mm -hmm. and you know we're just getting ready for this volume two you know we, we got a lot of projects in the works for this year andrea's yeah. writing and poetry is going to be in it Oh yeah, definitely. It should definitely. be. Yeah, definitely. Uh, We're gonna get her in there. We're gonna get her in there for sure. Yes, for sure. always. How always excited. Feel to be in a book, <laughs> an um, anthology. It feels good. I feel like the first ever published work that I had was when I was in elementary school in the fifth grade in the yearbook. And I was like, oh, like, <laughs> I'm published in the yearbook. Like, yeah. I can do anything. So now it's just on to even bigger and better things. So I'm excited for the she anthology. She started from the bottom, now we're here. That's a fact. That's a fact. Started <laughs> from the bottom, <laughs> now the whole team Come on. <laughs> That's so the goal. That's we're the so goal. excited about all of uh -huh. our upcoming programming. We have a, um, a Mother's Day event coming up this month. It's going to be at a Oval Park. That's also going to be oh, cool. a free community um, writing workshop. Yeah, it's no Dear Mama, uh, a Writer's Day workshop. So we're writing letters to our mothers, to our paternal figures, um, oh, and we're okay. also writing letters for other mothers in need. So mothers who are in shelters and mothers who are going through, you know, different transitional periods. Mm -hmm. um, food, networking, raffles, games, just for for the community, for the love. Yeah, I like that. I like yeah. what you guys are doing. You're Thank doing you. a whole lot of community. That's right up my alley. Yeah. I'm going to step out there with you and say, hey. Please, Hello. when Hello. we have our community karaoke, just get your song ready, Bob, and oh, come. Get, a song. Oh, get your no. song ready. Pick no, your song. Our producer, Steven, he, he, he does his thing. Yeah. Remember he did? He, he okay. came on and did something for you. <laughs> did, yeah. He did the Michael Jackson thing. Yes. Oh, he said he's coming down. He said he's going to do it. He said yeah. he's going to do it. See? So, yeah. Steve, you get ready, okay? Yeah, get that song, he's Steve. He's up in the Wizard of Oz booth. Get that song. <laughs> Whenever you ask about the Wizard of Oz booth, it's up there. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you both visit schools, and uh, yeah. I love what you're doing uh, in our neighborhoods with uh, youngsters. Yeah. You engage with students. What advice would you uh, give to them? You share them on how to navigate. You know, we spoke about some navigation before when I was doing the, yeah. the opening. But what advice would you guys give to students who are navigating through life and or through school? Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say, you know, follow uh, wh what it is that you love, you know. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't, you know, you're just going to be miserable, you know. Follow what you love. Mm -hmm. um, be un unapologetic about it. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, have some substance behind it. You know what I mean? Like what with what I do, you know, I, I always try to include, you know, my people, my community, you know, so yeah. always have some meaning behind what you're doing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Similarly, I would say, you know, explore tons of different creative outlets, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, follow your passions. Um, I would say start a business. I'm a huge right. advocate of young people starting businesses around their passion because there's no cap to the amount of capital that you're able to make. Um, really trying to create more young POC entrepreneurs. So I would say start a business and pursue that and start networking super young. Like figure out who is in the spaces that you're in. That's right. And what space you want to join. But yeah. um, as far as poetry and writing, what would you tell them? Just I mean, to just keep pinpoint. doing it to keep doing it, to keep writing. I know every day when I start my day with like 10 things I'm grateful for and then kind of just like a brain dump. So like when you wake up, try and think about something that you're grateful for and either put it in your phone, your apps, if you don't, you know, want to write physically or write it down physically and just like, don't let it fester, you know. Purge. Exactly. I like that, the brain dump. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Get the brain dump just going get it on. Yeah, you yeah. know, some of my best uh, poetry has come from like some of the worst things that I've written, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just just write, you know, even if you don't, even if you think it's not good, you know, just yeah. start it. Because yeah. the next day it may sound better. Wait a minute, this yeah. sounds pretty good yeah. here. Yeah. Or you could grab something out of it. You know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, like this is actually you fire. You can always find good in something bad. Yes. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> so you have the Mother's Day thing coming up. What's what's happening after that? Yeah. What are you guys working on? We yeah. have our Mother's Day event, and then we have a community open mic at Poe Park. And every month we have the Healing Hour in Harlem, and. Yeah, we just we just outside yeah, we're with it. Out there. You know, we got <laughs> yeah, we got some it. more projects coming out this summer. You know, we have uh, a, yeah. an exclusive uh, writer writers club uh, yeah. uh -huh. called the Poets Club. You know that we're gonna be starting soon. Right. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, yeah. I'll also be featured uh, this Thursday at Inspired Word NYC. All right. Um, All right. At Parkside Lounge this Thursday. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah. You know, we're just working. You know, yeah, we're just you guys working. are busy. We got a, we got a yeah. bunch <laughs> of things coming up, so for sure. That's good. Sure. Yeah, You're so the Poets busy. Club is gonna be really that's gonna be really cool. I wanna touch on that a little bit more. we um we get so many people asking us, like, you know, when do you do your writing workshops? Like how can we do you teach people how to perform the way you perform? So we decided to come together and create a virtual writing workshop for all uh -huh. of our, you know, poet friends to come out and write with us and explore just sharpening their writing skills and their speaking skills with us. So that's gonna be really cool. Did you sharpen yeah. up one that you can do for us uh, on how your show? How are you ready? <laughs> 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 it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's in the loading. works. It's loading. It's in the works. <laughs> oh, you're loading, cooking, you're loading, up, you're loading up. up. Uh, you got 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Get yeah, Andrea, you started out. Uh, um, I'm so at a loss. <laughs> I'm so at a loss right now. I have to pop it over to you first. I need, I had a long weekend. <laughs> yeah, I'll start it out. Yeah, please, We're please. We're sitting here together at the table. Improv. We're mm. sitting here together at the table. Sometimes life feels like a real fable. Mm. <laughs> and then you got to solidify it and put a label mm. on it. <laughs> on it. I'm about to go home and watch this on cable. Oh! <laughs> No, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm so right keep there. the cameras rolling. <laughs> yeah, keep the cameras rolling. Because. Because I'm never folding. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally what we were doing the other, yeah, the other day. That's what it's all about. Improv. That's just gotta, just gotta keep no, going. <laughs> And like, like you said, you know, we're going to watch this later on. You say, oh, let me throw these words to it. You know, I'm mm -hmm. got something here. Wait like, a minute. Wait, that wait was actually this fire. is the I first draft. draft. <laughs> <laughs> Where can we go to get more information on what you guys are doing? Yeah, okay. sure. You can definitely find me on Instagram at Poetic Black Girl. Um, G-U-R-L, again, because I have flavor and soul. Um, and where can we find you, Josue? Yeah, uh, follow me, uh, BX Writers. You know, mm -hmm. follow Poetic Black Girl. Um, we're doing amazing things, amazing projects yeah. for our people. Feel me? So, I'm yeah. loving it. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank and you we'll, be, we'll be catching you out there on some of the, uh, the maybe the karaoke's or some of the, mm. uh, you're doing so many wonderful things with the youngsters. Uh, so many different we're going to join you. We're going to join you. Pull yeah. Come through. All right. Appreciate Pull you. on up. Yay. Here we go now. Yay. Pull on up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. a quick break. Right. You can yeah, do your pose. I'm going to say it slow. We'll take a quick break right here.
Stay tuned, <laughs> kick off your shoes and relax your feet. We'll be back with a whole lot more mm -hmm. on Open coming up next. the hard part you quit smoking now do the easy part and get scanned for lung cancer if you smoked you may still be at risk but early detection could save your life talk to your doctor and learn more at savedbythescan.org dear moms and dads what you have achieved here today is going to help us and our futures. It is why we are coming up on stage to collect your diplomas. You know it's true. Mom, we love you always. Everything I do, I do when you so graduate, true. they graduate. Visit finishyourdiploma.org to find free and supportive adult education centers near you. Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Kids, you all right? This family's prepared. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. Go to nyc.gov slash readyny or call 311 for more information. And welcome, welcome, welcome back. Our next guest is the founder of Yodigo Nomas and CEO of Forme Medical Center and Urgent Care. And now she's here to speak about how she is a using her platform to share powerful stories from sexual abuse survivors and much more. So please welcome to the show, Maria Trusso. Maria, welcome to the show. Hey, Bob. Thank you so much for having me. You guys are becoming part of the Yodigo Novas family. I know. We, we can't do a whole month or six months without talking to Maria Trusso. Maria, you're always welcome to, to uh, show up on this show and share your wonderful experience. Thank you so much. So Bob, we were gonna talk about the amazing walk that we had. Oh. Uh, Saturday, so yes. we had um, the second walk of the Ligo Nomas. Uh -huh. uh, this was done, it was in Yonkers, and we ended up having, as you know, there was, it was a rainy, windy day, and one thing I knew for sure that nothing was going to stop this walk. No. Um, the message that we needed to send to the children is that we do not quit. We're going to have many challenges in during, the, you know, with this movement because yeah. we're bringing awareness to sexual abuse of our children. No rain on and your parade. To, Quitters never win it. and winners never quit. That's it. We, we were proof of that on Saturday. Yes. 
So it's a wonderful experience. Uh, this is the second one, and uh, you've been doing this for some time. Give us some background on how you got started with this. Now, how did you manage to gather the forces necessary to transform your pain into impulse necessary, the impulse necessary to find uh, growth and success and healing? Well, you know, I, I, I've spoken in the other programs about my story. My story led into the movement of the Onomas. It was something that it, I, I'd say that I am an instrument that God is utilizing for this yeah. mission uh, to really come to fruition and, and success. So um, I come, as I mentioned before, from uh, I'm a survivor of sexual abuse at the age of nine, and this is something that, you know, my father actually gave me to one of his friends, and he brutally raped me, and I almost lost my life, and I didn't speak about it for 47 years, and then I decided to write a book, and the book led into the movement, and the movement now mm. is a movement that nothing can stop it. We are bringing the awareness of what I call the silent pandemic of sexual abuse of our children, and in addition to that, we that breaking the silence is one of the most important campaign of the Digo So um, I was blessed enough to meet Dr. Sasada, Dr. Edwin Sasada from the Yankos Public School District. Yeah. He is a superintendent who introduced me to Mayor Spano, Mike Spano, who I knew, but not as close as, as I've gotten to know him. And Mayo Spano, uh, I didn't realize that he was a survivor of sexual abuse at the age of 12. And wow. he decided to bring in the march. I, I was talking to him about walking, you know, against this monster that we are dealing with. And last year, he gave us the go ahead and he closed the streets of the Cross Riverdale. We marched from a city hall to Maria Eugenia Osters. We marched about an half a mile. And we did the same thing this year. Last year, we had about a thousand people. And this year, we were expecting thousands of people. But unfortunately, you know, the rain, and everybody was questioning me, Bob, uh, do, yeah. do we cancel it, do we cancel it? And until the end, I was, I knew there wasn't one, for one second, I thought of canceling that march, because what was the message that we were going to be giving our children, that we quit rain? And and I yeah. talked about it this week. You know, to me, I was sexually abused. You think rain bothers me? Nothing can and stop it. Snow. Rain, snow, hail, sleet. You got to move on forward. You got to move forward with it. Yeah, and it was it was a blessing because at the beginning I didn't I didn't think many people were going to show up. But guess what? We had I would say close to the same as last year, and we had an incredible event. We walked. In the rain, we talked in the pouring, windy rain in front of yeah. the city hall, and we walked to Maria Eugenia Hostess, and we were there until about 3 o'clock with singers. The, my, my daughter actually sang, and it was very emotional because she sang Imagine, and there were children, and wow. we had food. People donated, and the mayor spoke, and Dr. Edwin Quesada, and survivors spoke. So it was extremely, extremely powerful. And we show that we mean business. Yeah. We're not stopping. Maria, you've been doing some wonderful things with uh, the program um, since you started. I mean, a lot of people have learned so much. And thank you, yeah. you know, for coming on and sharing what you share every time you come on. How much support uh, do you have, have you received uh, from local and city officials um, with this organization and with the event? Well, Many I know you got the mayor. Actually, yeah, I had the mayor. Many of them showed up. I mm -hmm. I, I was very surprised uh, because many of them did not let the rain stop. And uh, you will, you know, hopefully you guys will share the videos that we are, you know, we're posting with the speeches. And so the, the, uh, we're getting tremendous support, I have to say. And from the media, from the uh, government, we're getting support from uh, just people in general. We had so many volunteers that came together, six o'clock in the morning, people were there putting things together, making sure that we had a successful march. And I'm so grateful, but you know what, Bob? We need donations, so I am going to, you know, lead 
for people to really go in yodigonomas.com and yeah. donate for this course. We are going to make a serious impact in breaking the silence in education. We're bringing curriculum to the school district. We're writing books to, to teach parents how to speak with their children how, so that they are protecting them against sexual abuse because, unfortunately, over 93% of the abuse happens at home. The yeah. monster is in the house. And we need to educate to prevent. How do people donate now? I mean, you have a, a can they use Cash App or all the other platforms to donate to the, the, the cause and organization? They can, they can do this on Instagram and Facebook. They can go to yodigonomas.com and they can go, you know, I, I tell people, look, if a monthly donation, if all you can afford is ten dollars, then get whatever you can afford, right? We're just yeah. asking people to really join this movement so that we have the resources to be able to to move it as fast as it needs to move because there's urgency in sexual abuse of children. We cannot continue to normalize this. We know that it exists and we don't stop it. We don't talk about it and we need to stop. We need to break the chains of sexual abuse of our children. So any donation, large or small, and we'll be sure to put that up on, on, on the screen um, and let people know uh, more about it, Maria. Um, do you have anything else yeah. coming up that uh, we can participate in? How can we get involved? So we, we're going to be putting other events together. This was big, Bob. We've been preparing for this for six months months. Wow. But there's going to be a lot of activities. I'm doing a lot of uh, workshops. I have psychologists that are helping me, um, you know, helping the movement. We are working with the Yonkers Public School District. Uh, I gave a workshop last week uh, to in different schools with the, the students and the parents. I had a, I did a workshop where 40, about 40 parents showed up. And let me tell you, it was powerful. So we're going to be in, we're going to go on the street. The show is going to go on the road. We're going to be doing a lot of workshops uh, for the parents, for the students, for the teachers. So um, stay tuned. And people can go yeah. on our website, and, and we will be letting people know. And also, they can go into the website and register so that they can get the emails with updates of what is happening at Jodi Gonomas Movement. Yeah. You know, Maria, this is traumatizing to a lot of people, uh, and uh, people are reluctant to wanting to come out to share their story or just let people know about it. How does one begin to come out to talk about it or do something about it? You know, there's a, there's a book that I always quote, which is The Body Keeps the Score. You have not really started the healing process until you break the silence. This book talks about that when you keep the secret to yourself, you are at war with your soul. You need to break the silence. And that could be just even sending me, you know, at Maria Trusa underscore, um, Maria underscore Trusa, sending me a direct message on Instagram or going into your legal no math and telling your story, going into and talking to your friends. Just letting the secret out, and that starts the healing process. And I know, obviously, as a survivor, that it is very difficult to talk about this. But yeah. we need to start healing, and we need to start saying, you know, I was sexually abused. And then we need to also make sure that we start breaking the secret in the family because the secret feeds the pandemic and it allows the abuser to continue to abuse other children. So breaking the silence is, is a serious business and it needs to start happening. Maria Trusso, uh, founder of Yo, Yo, Digo, Yo Digo No Mas and CEO of Forme Medical Center and Urgent Care. We thank you for joining us. Where can we go to get more information? Give us your website. It's yodigonomas.com. People could also go into my website, mariatrusa.org, mariatrusa.org. And please do mm. put the link so people would uh, be able to access it easily. And we are so grateful for the support that you guys give us. Uh, you are the best. Thank you for the, uh, and now it's like two years of support. So yeah. we are grateful. Thank we you so much. 
Thank you. And we love you for everything that you're doing to help our community. We appreciate you. Take care, Bob. All right, Maria, Maria Trusa. Uh, she's the founder of Yo Digo No Mas and CEO of Forme Medical Center and Urgent Care. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll take a quick break right here. I've got more open coming up next. My character, Shazam, knows all about growing up in a family full of teenage superheroes. They're bold. Where's everyone going? To fight crime. Okay. Adventurous. Shazam! There's never a dull moment. And no matter what happens, they'll always have your back. All they need is a place to grow and be themselves. And the best part is, you don't have to be a superhero to adopt a teen. Learn more about adopting a teen from foster care. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. You can't imagine the reward. And there you go. Welcome back. You know, our next guest is an entrepreneur, producer, manager, and entertainment consultant who has been known in the hip-hop industry as the dream weaver. Makes it all happen for people, too. And uh, he's here with us to speak about how he has taken his talents from music artist management to media production with this company, 360 Digital Media Group. So please welcome to the show, Ian Burke. Ian, welcome. Hey. How are you, Dr. Bond? All right. Now, you, your old stomping grounds is right up above the Bronx, right? Absolutely. Right next door. Right next door. That's where it started for you? That's where it started. In Money Earning Mount Vernon, you know, where I, you know, listened to uh, WBLS on a constant basis growing up. Yeah, you listened to us you while know. we were playing Heavy D and the Boys. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that, 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 that was my uh, grade school and high school partner. Yeah, you had a bunch of people up there. You had uh, Albie Shaw, uh, Heavy D. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, P-Rock, uh, 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 P. Diddy. Yeah, that's right. They're all from up there. All from up there. So you decided to uh, move out and move to Atlanta, and that's where it all came together for that's you? What, Explain it yes, how it happened. It, my my parents decided to retire and move to Florida and I didn't want to I didn't want to be in Florida so you know I chose a place that was close enough uh -huh. to Florida so I could visit yeah and uh, I heard a lot of good things about Atlanta and um you know I decided to to make it my home I I started off studying computers uh but then I stumbled into the whole music thing and uh it it changed my life and your father influenced, influenced you in the music business? My father was a musician, so yes, he definitely had a, a part in me wanting to be in the music because I couldn't play an instrument. He tried to teach me, but it didn't catch. Yeah, yeah. Right, so the Dreamweaver, where, where did that come from? Well, it, it started when people started to realize or, or to recognize, you know, that, that I was able to help their careers, um, starting with uh, Arrested Development yeah. in the early 90s. Um, I, I was working with them, and uh, I, I went on to create the group you now know as TLC. Yeah. Uh, you can see me on their upcoming uh, documentary that's coming out on uh, the Life uh, Lifetime Network, I believe. Uh -huh. uh, I'll be featured on that. Um then uh, it went on to uh, Outcast and Organized Noise Productions and Escape uh, and Jermaine Dupree and Dallas Austin and, and quite a few people. I was able to interweave myself into, uh, into, into their careers, into their lives. Yeah. You helped a lot of people get where they are today. And you said, you know, the best way to do that is to rise people by lifting others mm -hmm. or rise just raise yourself by lifting others Ex explain well, that yeah well you know that that's how that's how i was able to gain my notoriety is by helping other people mm -hmm. uh attain theirs 
You know what I'm saying? So by helping these people uh, achieve their goals uh, as singers, songwriters, producers, and artists, um, people began to to recognize who I was. Yeah. Bring and, it out loud. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah we, that's at the Soul Train Awards one year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So that's exhibit... Real- and Safari, yeah, you know, it, it's been a beautiful and, 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 and very interesting, entertaining, entertaining ride. Uh, I just received my doctorate in uh, entertainment, arts and entertainment, business management. All so right. uh, I'm very happy and proud about that. There you go. And you've been around so many people. What stands out in your mind? You know, when I travel and I host for different people all over the country, you know, there's some things that you say, oh, wow, I'll never forget this. What are some unforgettable memories that you have that you can share with us? Oh, it's it's watching. Uh, one is uh, being at the Grammys when uh, Outkast won Album of the Year, which is the top Grammy uh, yeah. of the night. Uh, being in that audience is like watching your child graduate summa cum laude from one of the biggest or the finest uh, universities. Yeah. Um, and it was amazing to me to watch, to be able to be a part of their growth from the very beginning and to watch them grow to this point, to selling over 10 million albums. Yeah. Well, it's amazing to me. And, and, and that, that uh, is what keeps me going in this industry. So now you have your own company, 360 Digital Media Group. Yes, What's sir. it all about? What are you doing with it? Well, you know, after spending so much time in the uh, uh, in the music field, uh, I decided to switch over into uh, film and television. And my my brother, who is 11 years my senior, uh, former Navy salvage diver, uh, came up with a concept uh, via his uh, nonprofit, Junior Scientists in the Sea, where he teaches. Um, uh, wayward children ha- uh, how to scuba dive and also teaches them ocean conservation uh, was like hey how can we do this and create some sort of uh, film or docu series and and we put our heads together and, and uh, in 2020 during covid uh, we we decided to make it work yeah. for ourselves so you know we I, I created 360 digital media group uh, to focus on uh, creating content for mm-hmm. film and television. That's group. That's just fantastic. So the group is doing well, huh? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We're we're also working on a uh, uh, a docu series uh, based on my life and my early days in the music business here in Atlanta and my work, the work that I've done with uh, with the people that I mentioned previously and other songwriter producers and um, future executives, you know, people who worked alongside with me that became major executives in this business. Yeah, and uh, you're not too far from um, Tyler Perry out in the business. Right up the road. In Atlanta. (laughs) I'm working towards his success. See, and Tyler Perry's um, brother, Embry Perry, he directed The Aquatics, the, the show that my brother and I came up with. See that? Now, if you were able to ask him for some help, or, or you think you guys could collaborate on something? No, I, w- I would love to collaborate. You know, that, that, that would be on his brother, you know, to make that connection. But I would love to collaborate. Uh, I, I did work with Tyler when I was representing the McLean sisters uh, who were featured in his uh, movie Daddy's Little Girls. Yeah, yeah. And the youngest McLean, uh, China, also uh, played in his TV show House of Pain. So we've met each other, we're familiar with each other, um, but that was way before I decided to take the plunge into this film and television thing. Well, and now he knows, well, you have to let him know that you're involved in the TV like he is in production, Absolutely. producing, and all of that. And you never know. Absolutely. You never know. The sky's the limit. Yeah, that's and that, and that's what I'm working towards. Yeah, so step foot on that army base and see what you can come up with. <laughs> <laughs> Where can we go to find more information about everything that you're doing, man? And thank you for what man, you're doing uh, too. 
Uh, I'm very active on my social media, especially Instagram. Um, you can actually schedule, um, as, as a consultant, uh, you can schedule a free 15-minute consultation call with me on my Instagram page, which is at I-A-N-F Burke, E-N-F Burke. You can find me on that social media page and schedule a 15-minute free consultation call with me. Um, and that's the best way to, to, to get a hold of me is follow me on Instagram. And if you need an actor, I'm available. Oh yeah, listen, don't play now. Now see that that's that's we, uh, we we need some coming up. I did that once before and it happened. <laughs> hey Ian, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Ian Burke. Thank you for having me, man. I really appreciate your patience and everything. You got it. And we'll talk again. You're always welcome to come on. We'll take a quick break right here. I've got more open coming up next. We all know what it's like to feel alone. But it just takes one new connection. Want to get out of here? To empower many. This is unbelievable. It doesn't take a superhero to bring forces together. We all have the power to reach out. Let's go! And help someone feel like they belong. Pretty cool, huh? We are stronger together. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Our next guest is a writer, a men's development coach, and a college professor in Southern California with over 25 years of experience in education. He joins us to speak about his book, Joker to King, and to share tips on how young men can mature into adulthood. Please welcome to the show Dr. Robert Dalen Brown. Dr. Brown, welcome. Welcome, 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 Dr. Lee. Thank you for having me on the show. This is an honor. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So you're all the way out there in California, huh? Yes, I am. West Coast <laughs> meets loving. East Coast. Yes, yes, yes. So you have this wonderful book out here. I, I heard uh, that you, you've been talking about it for some time now. Um, what inspired this book, Joker to King, and how does your life experience tie, tie you into this book? Well, the book started as a personal project for my brother. I have a brother who's 19 years younger than me. And uh, Christmas of 2012, he asked me if I could actually teach him how to be a man. Whoa. He was struggling okay. in his life. He was struggling. He had dropped out of a couple of colleges. He um, needed a job. He was about to get kicked out of his own place. and. He said his life has fallen apart and asked me if it was possible to teach somebody step by step how to be a man. And, and you know, no one was that explicit with me before about anything. Yeah. Um, I've, I've written curriculum my entire life. I've, ta I've taught math for eight years. I've taught English for nine years. I I've been a college dean, a professor, a tutoring center coordinator, program coordinator. He challenged me, is it possible to write curriculum yeah. with homework assignments on teaching someone how to be a man? Oh, and, wow. Yeah, and what happened was in 2013, I decided to, to move him into my house, take him up on this challenge. On his birthday, I gave him his first lesson. It was a lesson about integrity, and it was stapled to a playing card, the Ace of Spades. And I told him, now there are 52 weeks in a year. Uh -huh. There are 52 cards, cards in, a in a deck. And what we're going to do, starting right now on your birthday, we are going to give you a lesson every single week. And we're going to build this deck of cards so that by the time 12 months gets here, 52 weeks later, it'll be your birthday again. And we'll finish the whole deck. And I got a nice present for you waiting for it, waiting for you at the end. And what ended up happening, what, he loved the idea. We started the whole process. And the spades 
represent those lessons that have to do with emotional mastery, the inner healing that you need, your mental health, your mental hygiene, your confidence, your mindset. The diamonds represent all the lessons he needed to learn about money and resources, Yeah, like how to balance a budget, how to start a, a, a business, how to, what, what is investing, the basics of investing, uh, retirement plans, um, how to be in a relationship with someone else and manage your money as a couple. Yeah. You know, the clubs represent all the lessons that he needed to learn on managing his environment. Uh, and, and walking in his way in the world. So these are lessons that have to do with how to travel, how uh -huh. to cook, how to buy a suit, uh, the relationship between men and violence, uh, the relationship between men and alcohol, you know? Yeah, and the heart. And the hearts represent all the le uh, lessons about relationships, you know, how to, how to forgive your parents, how to master small talk, um, how to be the parent that your future kids are going to need and everything from dating to working relationships. And so what ended up happening was we put these lessons together and we're, we're talking and practicing. Like I said, this is a personal project mm -hmm. for my brother and several weeks in, he says, you know, you need to get all my friends together in the room and <laughs> tell them this, tell them this stuff. And uh -huh. That's when the light bulb came on. Um, I realized I have 52 lessons. That's 52 chapters. I could just put yeah. these things together, work with a publishing consultant or a, a book designer and have this book out for the world. And so in 2016, the first edition of Joker to King was published and it was an amazing experience. I learned about the publishing process myself. Yeah. I worked with professional artists, designers to design the book covers, uh, worked with a publishing consultant to help me market this book. And on the first week when it came out, Father's Day week, 2016, the ebook was the most downloaded self-help book on Amazon. Wow. It, it hit number one. And uh, it also hit number one in the gender studies category, which I thought was interesting because we don't see a lot of books about men and masculinity and manhood that yeah. are top sellers in gender studies. Um, then five months later, the book was the Southern California Grand Prize winner. That's when I realized, uh, I'm sorry, something. Southern California Book Festival Grand Prize winner. Yeah. And that's when I realized I have something pretty powerful here. Um, but that was 2016. And since then, my own life changed. You know, I went through my own struggles. Uh, in 2017, uh, my father passed away. My uh, job situation changed. Um, and I started going to therapy myself. And also, uh, my marriage started breaking apart. Yeah. You know, all, all of these things started happening in 2018. Everything just came to a head and really just blew apart. So I decided I actually revisited Joker the King. You know, I'm, I'm looking at these things now as a middle aged man and yeah. seeing that these things are not necessarily for young men. They are for everybody. Yeah. It's about it's about healthy maturity and adulthood and managing oneself. And then in 2019, I decided to do this really, really hard reset. I pushed the reset button and- You have to, um, you have to. Yeah. When you hit rock bottom, you have to hit reset and just uh, try to pull yourself back up. Ex ex that's yeah. exactly right. I initiated a divorce. I lost 25 pounds, got my health back together. Um, I switched my job situation. I got full custody of my kids and started this new life, which led me to writing a second edition of Joker the King. So the book cover that uh, your audience was looking at right there on the screen, that's the second edition of the book, uh, an updated version with a lot more um, lessons that are relevant to healthy, healthy adulthood, healthy manhood. 
some chapters were taken out of the old ones, some ones were put in this new edition. Yeah. And I'm getting a lot, a lot of positive, positive feedback, positive response. We are building the Joker to King community nationwide. Yeah. Now it helped you. It pulled you out. So you said, you know what? I've got some experience in this. I've written a book and I fell and it helped me help me to climb back out. Um, in a nutshell, what yes. do you see readers getting out of your book? Uh, the number one thing is holistic health. Whenever we think of health, we think of our physical health, we think of our body, we think of our fitness, our weight, our heart, all those type of things are important. But holistically, yeah. we need, especially men, holistically, we need to understand what health looks like. Healthy mindset, mental health, emotional health, social health. A lot of times men neglect their social relationships with other men, with their families, with um, nieces, nephews, sons, daughters. We provide for so many other people without having healthy social relationships that feed back to us. Is uh, that due to thing? social media? Because a lot of people are on these things here. <laughs> you, know, I, you know what? Um, yes and no. The, the reason why I say yes and no is because men have been experiencing this for centuries, for decades. There's a way that we move in the world that yeah. we are socialized to take care of others. We are socialized to protect, provide, and preside. And we're socialized to stuff our feelings down. We're socialized not to talk through our emotions. And all of this socialization in this way makes for poor, poor mental health. And when I, sa I said yes and no, because social media just exacerbates the problem. <laughs> you know, it's, it's yeah. like, you know, it's like sprinkling oil on a grease fire. It's just going to blow this thing up even more. We tend to isolate ourselves because of our technology. We tend to isolate ourselves because of social media. We're experiencing what friendship is like from a distance. And we have a lot of experts that are seeing how this is playing out in our relationships or our mental health. We have more people right now seeking help for depression, anxiety, uh, suicidal ideation, and all of it is happening at the um, hands of a lot of this smartphone technology. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the original social media was being out there in person and shaking hands and, and kissing babies and just being in the public. And that, that to right. me, that was social. So I'm doing a little bit of both still. <laughs> yeah, that's so exactly you right. You're not getting involved in this whole social media thing? Come on, you got to get on Instagram and... Uh, and in all the other platforms, I said, well, you know, I still make appearances out. That's that's my that's the original to me. That's the original social media. So when that's taken away and people are not talking to one another, looking people in the eyes and, you know, shaking hands and doing all those things that we need to be uh, social about. That's the thing that uh, disturbs the groove to me. Yeah. Exactly. It, it, it's odd because all of these platforms were created with the intent to bring people together yeah. without thinking that we are more than these avatars behind the screen. You know, we bring people together because the Internet connects one profile and one profile together, but we're not actually bringing people together. We're bringing our digital representatives together. Yeah. Does that make sense? It makes a whole lot of sense. Um, right. What are some of the biggest obstacles that the young men have uh, have to overcome um, to mature into the, the adult? Because the adolescent stage is really, really crazy in itself. So some of the things that they need to do, and parents just pull their hair out over this. <laughs> well, we as, as, as parents and, and older folks of these kids, we need to actually encourage them to open up a little bit more. There are things that we do as an older generation that actually keeps kids a little bit more quiet. And it it doesn't help, you know. We need to have young folks be more vulnerable, 
open up, express themselves, express what they're feeling, share their emotions. We actually need to teach them how to feel their emotions, actually. Mm-hmm. We, um, right now, especially with boys, what we're doing is we are creating a society where anger and rage are the only acceptable emotions that boys are allowed to express, mm-hmm. you know? And we are doing that to them. It's not something that they are growing up thinking that they have to do themselves. We are creating this for these kids. You know, we are creating environments where we we have a tendency to pick up little girls when they're crying and we tell boys, stop crying. <laughs> you know, we, we tell boys to man up and we tell girls about how beautiful they are and and, and we encourage them to talk with their playing. Yeah. They're playing with their dolls and they're talking their way through conflict with their dolls and, and boys are shooting at each other with Nerf guns, you know? Wow. Yeah. We are doing these things to our kids and not realizing it because they were done to us, <laughs> you know? We came through. Sooner or later, sooner or later, someone has to break this cycle on behalf of the generation that's coming up. All right, so we have to talk more about this. Uh, you're always welcome to come on and, and share some more thoughts, okay? Good luck with the book. Dr. Yes, Robert yes, Dalen Brown, author and professor, Joker to King. I like it, I like it, I like it. I appreciate it. Let all your audience know they can just go to jokertoking.com or anywhere they find themselves, listen to the podcast, listen to Spotify, go to the YouTube channel, and connect Joker to King. There's even a link for men to write anonymous questions and get their questions answered ah, on the Joker to King website. Great. Thank you so much. Enjoy that weather out there. What's the temperature like <laughs> out there in California? You know what? It's funny you say that because today it finally started raining again. <laughs> ah, I see. But uh, I, I, I'm looking for the sun by the weekend. <laughs> oh, good, good. Hey, thanks for joining us, and you're always welcome to come back, okay? I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You got it. Dr. Robert Dalen Brown, author and professor, Joker the King. Uh, we're going to do a wrap right here, but uh, thank you, Sal Abatello from Fever, the Fever Records. He did the hip hop Fever, and um, all the artists came down. They were part of it. They did, a, I mean, it's a fantastic uh, show. Celebrating 50 years of hip hop, make sure you tune in. We've got it all for you right here. We're going to let you know more that's coming down the pipe, all right? Sal Al Abatello, thank you for all that you do and continue to do uh, for, for the world of hip-hop. Sal, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all we have for today. Thank you, thank you. We appreciate you. We want to thank you for joining us, you, our viewers, for tuning in and checking it all out. Uh, you can continue following us uh, on BronxNet TV for continued coverage, and uh, thank you for letting us share in this space and time with you. Join Kevin Arlene, Darren Jaime, and Rena Valentin on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday for the all-new episodes of Open. Of the Dr. Bob Lee, I'll catch you another day, another way. Always remember this, what you are is God's gift to you. What you make of yourself is your gift to God. So choose your choice. Let your choice control the chooser. Catch you. Peace. 7.5 WBLS.